So the next term is tweakable block fibers with a symptom to come in optimal security. The older, uh, older block and the adding pseudo and all those will give us a talk. And it's uh, secu security proof. It's about uh, indistinguishability of uh, about box ciphers. I'm going to explain what it is. So a clickable box cipher is a box cipher when you when you add a tweak. So instead of having just a set of keys in a, a domain, you add a parameter, which is a tweak. And it can be useful for disk encryption, for example. And it, it has been introduced at uh, Crypto 2002 by this Scott Rivers and back then. And in the following, we consider only construction uh, based on existing block ciphers. So the, the original construction is just one round. You have a block cipher. And you have a set of hash functions. And you can see the tweak is the variable uh, t. The hash functions verify some uh, property that I, I'm going to explain in the next slide. And this construction is uh, secure up to uh, 2 to the n or 2 queries against uh, CC attacks. And this is the property for the hash functions. The hash functions needs to be, it's not so randomness, but it's, it's that property. If you set x and x prime and y, then you have the following inequality. And uh, the last year, um, Landeker, Shrimpton, and Terashima proposed the following construction. It's the same construction with uh, one more round. And uh, they prove the security up to uh, 2n over 3. So the intuitive question is uh, what happens if we have more rounds? Let's say you have l rounds. What's the bound? And that's uh, the subject of the, the paper. We analyzed uh, the security of the, of the previous shape. And uh, it's what we proved. You have the following bound. And you can see the R and R plus 1. So for example, for one round, you will have Q to the 2. And then you will have one, so you find the same bound for the one more. And we have the same result for two rounds, and so on. Asymptotically, with the number of rounds, you go up to the information bound, which is a two to the end. So this is the NCPA security. So uh, we are optimal in and CPA security. And the second equality is the CCA security. For the CCA security, we are close to the optimal, but it's not yet finished, and it's a, an open problem. Um, yeah, so I, I'm going to explain the, the proof. So you, you have two worlds. You have the real world, you have the queries of the attacker. You have the shield. And then on the right, you have the ideal world where pi is a, a tweakable random permutation. It means that for every t, p of t is a random permutation. 
So you have to, these two worlds, and you want to to compare the statistical, uh, you want to compute the statistical distance between these outputs and this one. If you, if you have a statistical distance, you know the security of the two cable box hyper. So the first thing we do is we divide the problem. We'll add intermediate worlds so that it's, it's easier to, to analyze the security. Because so far, these two worlds looks uh, quite different. So first thing, we consider this world. When we change the box cipher, we replace it by random permutations. We, did, we do this for uh, each round. And then the third world, which should be compared to the, the one on the right, when we have random permutation, but the very interesting thing is that we change the queries. Now we take random queries, uniformly random queries. <coughs> and let's see the statistical distance between the, the following world. Between this one and this one, we change the box cipher by random permutation. So the statistical distance is upper bounded by the security of the block cipher. That's what uh, I put it there. Then, it's a very nice idea for the coupling. Uh, the coupling is a technique used uh, a few years ago. Uh, and the very beautiful idea of the coupling is to change the randomness, to move the randomness from the permutation, pi, to the inputs. So in the ideal world, the outputs are uniformly random because pi is uniformly random. But in that third world, the outputs are uniformly random because the inputs are uniformly random. So the idea is to move the randomness of pi to the randomness of the inputs. And that way, we know that these two worlds, world 0 and either world, act the same. The outputs have the same distribution. So the statistical distance is 0. And so it remains to compute the statistical distance between these two worlds. And as you can see, these two worlds are very close, at least in the description. It's the same thing, but there is only the inputs that change. So I take this world Q and world zero, and I put it there and there. And now we, we keep dividing the problem. We introduce many worlds, and in each intermediate world, we change the inputs. So in world Q, you have the Q queries of the attacker. And in the world 0, you have Q random inputs. And the idea is just to, to take a variation between these two worlds by taking the L first inputs to be the attacker's query. And then you have random queries. So if you want to distinguish the world Q with the world 0, we are going to distinguish between the adjacent worlds. Means our goal now is to analyze world L plus 1 and world L. And as you can see, they are very, very close. The only difference is the L plus 1 query. Right there is X L plus 1 and right there is U L plus 1. And it's uh, and right now we are going to use the coupling technique, which is a technique uh, which comes from uh, probabilities, and it's very very powerful to analyze uh, many rounds uh, machines. And that's the same technique we used uh, in the article of uh, Azakel 2012 when uh, we studied uh, the even Mansour uh, construction with many rounds. Well, yeah, first thing. 
just for notation, uh, it was pi1 and pi1 there, but it's not necessarily the same. So I just uh, changed the, not the notation. You have uh, pi prime and h prime. So now I'm going to explain the grouping technique. Let's say you have uh, two distributions, mu and u. A coupling is just a joint distribution such that marginal distributions are mu and mu. So it means exactly that. The coupling is a uh, lambda over the the space product, and uh, you have the following equalities. And the following lemma is uh, explain why it's useful to use a coupling. Because for any coupling, you have the following inequality. Now let me just explain. If you have two random variables, x and y, <coughs> which have the distribution of the coupling, which means x follows the distribution of mu and y follows the distribution of mu. Then you can compute the statistical distance between mu and mu by computing the probability that the random variables are different. So in theory it looks maybe complicated, but in practice it's not very complicated. I'm going to give an example. Let's say you have two coins, and the first coin make head with uh, probability p1, and the second one makes the coin with probability p2. And you want to distinguish the two coins. You want to compute the advantage to distinguish the two coins. You can make uh, the regular arguments, but here we are going to use the, the coupling. So the idea is to correlate the two distributions. How we do it? I'm going to say that every time the first coin makes a head, the second one will always make a head. So it means that with probability P1, the two coins make head. Then when the, the coin C1 doesn't make head, we have with probability P2 minus P1, that's one makes tail and the other one makes head. And one minus P2, that the two points make tail. So really the idea is to correlate the two distribution. And using the previous lemma, this one, you can compute the statistical distance between the outputs. Because X, for example, is the the outputs for the first coin and why the, the outputs for the second coin. And with the following array, you see that the two coins are different with priority P2 minus P1. So this gives you that the advantage is upper bounded by P2 minus P1. That's the following technique that we are going to use to uh, distinguish the two worlds. So let's go back to the two worlds. So right there, where is the randomness? You have randomness in P1, H1, PR, HR, there, 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 and you. There is many randomness. The idea is to correlate randomness in the first world and the second world so that the outputs are the same. Because right now, they are not necessarily the same. And after that, if we know the probability that the outputs are different, then we know the statistical distance between the two worlds. So the first thing we do is we pick at random H1 to HR, and then for H prime 1 to H prime R, we say it's equal to the left world. So it's very, it's a very strong correlation. 
right now we have the same age function on the left and on the right. Now maybe you might be tempted to, to say that you can take the same pi function as well. And it's a good idea for the first input because uh, if you have pi 1 equals p prime 1, and since you have x1 and x1, you will have the same outputs. The problem is for the last one, xl plus 1 and ul plus 1. You're not sure you're going to find the same output because you're not sure that this is the same input. So we are not going to make such a strong correlation, but it looks like that. We take the, the pi function, and then for the, just for the L first input, every time you have to use P prime, you choose the same random randomness for P prime and you use for P, for pi. And you do the same for each round. And so you have the same output. So the idea really is to, you have x1 here, you have h, you resolve with uh, h1 of t, and you have uh, an input in there. And on this world, you have the same input, but not so far the same permutation. But just for this input, for x1, you show the same outputs. You correlate the randomness. And you do this for each round. And you do this for the n first queries. So that way, you know that the L first queries give the same outputs. So that's what I put there. Y1 to YL, this is the same <laughs> outputs. It means we have uh, successfully coupled the first L queries. We know how to couple the L plus one query. This is the tough part. So now, the, the idea is, let's say, the input to P1, to Pi1, doesn't collide with a previous query. And if at the same, same time, this input right there doesn't collide as well, then you have some freedom on the output, on the two outputs. And the idea is to, to choose the same randomness so that the, the two systems can couple at, uh, at that round. So that, that's this, this equation. If you have not already defined xl plus 1 plus h1 of tl plus 1, and same thing in the right board, if it's not defined, then you, shape, you choose the same randomness, and you make them equal. And in further rounds, you make them equal with the same technique. And now we have to compute when it's not possible. It's not possible when there is a collision, when there is a collision in the left world or a collision in the right world. So this is the, the following equations. And now we are going to compute the, the probability of the collision. You need to have one of the following equality. And this is exactly the property of the hash functions. You can upper bound the probability of these two events using the, pro the property on the hash functions. You remember we have a, a property on the hash functions. This is this one. And so we can compute the probability of I mean, such equations. This is given by this equation. And, uh, and that's it. That's it for one round, sorry. And then for, uh, for multiple rounds, because we chose independent round functions, we just have to multiply the, prob the probability of coupling for all the rounds. So instead of 2L epsilon, <coughs> we have uh, 2L epsilon to the R. This is the probability of of uh, having a, an error while, uh, while coupling. 
So this gives the, the statistical distance. The statistical distance will be upper bounded by this term, which equals this one. And this, this ends the proof. And we have the following result. Um, we have to notice that the proof for NCPA and not CCA, because we choose uh, the queries uh, by advance uh, in order to compute the probability. Right now, we don't know how to do it directly with CCA queries, because uh, we, we don't know what's the probability of the collision. But we have a trick to, uh, to obtain the CCA security. The idea is to compose two NCPA secure two cable box cipher. And when we compose uh, two such box cipher, it, it yields uh, a CCA two, two cable uh, box cipher. This is a new result. We, we already had such a result with uh, just box cipher. And we have the same result for two cable box cipher with the condition that we have to use the same tweaks. And so applying this result uh, to the previous one, this gives the CCA security. We change the formula. And as you can see, this is secure up to 2 to the R over R plus 2. So it's not yet optimal. And the open question is to prove that it's secure to R over R plus 1. This is exactly the same open problem that we have for even more so and that we presented at, as a group uh, last year. Thank you. The problem is that uh, it's, I think it's possible, but it's, uh, we don't know how to compute the probability of, uh, of not coupling on all rounds. We use the result that uh, the probability of not coupling on all rounds is the product of the probability of not coupling on that round times the probability of not coupling on the next round. And so because the round functions are independent, it's easy to compute this, this one. But there is some dependence. dependence. Uh, it's not easy to compute such a, such a thing. Thank you. So, thank you. perhaps you need some innovation to analyze such, uh, such, such an object. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting to, to analyze. Other questions or comments? Okay, let's let speak again.